Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, an architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at load balancers on Azure and how you can use load balancers to provide highly available applications on Microsoft Azure. Load balancers in Azure behave much the same way their on-premise counterparts do in that they provide a load balancing configuration for highly available applications. So with Azure, you might end up with something that looks like this, where you have the internet that's represented by the cloud and then an Azure VNet. And then you carve that VNet up into subnets. Now the subnets typically correspond to some layer in the application. So a multi-tiered application might have two or three different subnets. And each one of these subnets is going to contain a component of the actual application that you're trying to serve up. So in the case of this two-tiered application, my front-end subnet would naturally contain my web servers. And so in this case, I have two uh, highly available web servers or two web servers that are configured in a highly available uh, scenario here. And basically what they're doing is serving up the same content. So if a request comes into web server one, it's going to serve up the same content as if the request was going to web server two. In the event that one of these web servers goes down, I can route all the traffic to a single web server and my application continues to function even though one of the servers might go offline. And to make this happen, I need a load balancer to handle those requests and then monitor those web servers in front of them to make sure they're available and then uh, route the incoming requests appropriately to those front end web servers. Similarly, in the back end, I would have something that looks like this where I have a database cluster. A database cluster typically will have uh, multiple nodes as a part of it. In this case, I have three, which in many database clustering technologies is the minimum amount for a quorum uh, for a highly available configuration. And much like the front end web servers, they need some way to route the incoming requests so that any one of those three database servers can handle that request. So here I have yet another load balancer and and the requests coming in from the web server are sent to that load balancer, which has an internal IP address. And then it can then forward that request onto the back end database servers. It can pick server one, two, or three, and any one of those will be able to handle it. And much like that front end load balancer, uh, the back end load balancer is monitoring those servers to make sure that they're alive and that they're healthy. And so that when one of those goes down, it won't route requests to it and it can send it to the actual operational servers so that the requests end up uh, getting handled by the server and then sent back to the web server back to the ultimately to the browser that's making the request. So this is a very uh, minimal setup for what might be considered a highly available application on Azure. And I'm off, I'm leaving out a lot of the details here, but this basic architecture is one that you will find in many applications on uh, highly available applications using infrastructure as a service on Azure and other clouds like Azure. You can see here that I have in the Azure portal a resource group called HA WordPress. And what I've done is I've configured WordPress in an HA setup on Azure. Now to do this, I basically created something that looks a lot like the diagram we just saw, wherein we had three database backends and then two web frontends. Now what I did here for these databases, is I created a Galera cluster, which is a clustering technology for MariaDB or MySQL database databases where each one of these can function as an independent database node. And then if writes come in on one, it replicates those to the other nodes so that they have consistency between all the nodes. And then any one of these database nodes can then handle reads as well. And um, to make this work with Galera, you have all those uh, configured in HA configuration. Then you need something in the front end, like a, a load balancer to route requests to any one of those three nodes. Similarly, on the front end, I have two web servers and each one of these are running the WordPress app on Apache. And between these, I, I put a file share, which has the WordPress uh, installed on it. And that's where all the content lives, like all the, the images and all the PHP files and so on. But the actual web servers are running Apache and they both read from that common share. And then there's some configuration you do to make it highly available on WordPress. And once you have that all set up, you can have WordPress run as highly available on multiple web servers. And then it hit a database backend that's highly available uh, because of Galera. 
Now, each one of these does require a load balancer, so uh, I have two load balancers in my configuration here. Let's take a look at the, the, the database load balancer here. Now, this is an internal load balancer with the basic SKU. The, the, the standard SKU has more options available to it, but uh, for our, our purposes here, this basic SKU will do just fine. The only major difference between it and a public load balancer is the private or public IP address. In this case, I'm using a private IP address on my backend subnet because that's where my databases are. And so what I do is I expose the database as this IP address inside of my uh, WordPress configuration and the WordPress configuration things is talking to a single node, but in reality, it's actually talking to one of three different nodes on the back end. And once I have that configured uh, in my WordPress app and I have this load balancer in front of it, then I, I have my highly available uh, WordPress instance against a highly available uh, database. Now, a load balancer essentially has three components. It has a front-end IP configuration, a back-end pool, and a health probe, and you pull all those together using load balancing rules. So my front-end configuration uh, is basically that private IP address that we mentioned here. It's 10.3.2.10, uh, and that's on my back-end subnet. Now, uh, my back-end pool is where I assign the actual uh, database, database nodes to this particular uh, load balancer. In this one, I have a single a pool, and it's called DB Web, and I have those three database nodes as part of this. So if I come into this particular uh, pool, you can see I have associated with an availability set, but you can also use scale sets as well inside uh, load balancers. Uh, the standard option on uh, Azure allows you to assign virtual machines that aren't in an availability set or in a scale set. You can just assign uh, standalone VMs uh, to the actual load balancer as well. And each one of these are uh, have their own IP addresses. And so what basically I do is come in here and I select a, a any one of those virtual machines. And then I select one of its IP configurations as to be a part of that back end pool. So when I have my pool configured, um, I need to configure a health probe here. Now, a, a health probe here is uh, es essentially uh, something that checks the nodes for uh, their availability. Now, in this particular instance, what I have, you see that I have an HTTP probe. Now, what I've done here in this configuration is I've actually configured the the backend nodes with an, a little HTTP web server that will t open up a connection to MySQL and then uh, check it to see if the connection is successful. And if the connection is successful, then it returns a 200 uh, code. Uh, if it doesn't, if it's unable to connect to that MySQL instance uh, for whatever reason, it will throw an exception and then we'll return a 500 error code. And um, the reason I would do this instead of just seeing if the, the port was open uh, is to give a little bit more intelligence to the actual health probe rather than just say, oh, is the port open? Uh, rather, I'm actually to see, I'm actually looking to see if not only the port open, but is the actual database available for use? Uh, is it responding appropriately to requests? Is it healthy in that respect? Um, because just a, a port probe isn't going to tell me a whole lot about what's going on inside of the actual application. So with a simple HTTP probe, you can actually do a little bit more intelligent uh, work behind the scenes and then have the actual load balancer probe uh, check that health endpoint. And then uh, if it's just looking for an HTTP error uh, status code to be 200 or something in that range, then it says, okay, that's healthy. If it's 300, 400, uh, 300, that's a redirect to 400 or 500 would be some kind of error. And then they would mark that node as unhealthy. Now, if, if I did just do a health uh, a probe check, a port check, I would just check 3306 in that instance, is the port open or is it not open? But that doesn't tell me anything about the actual uh, health of the application as it's running inside of my given database node. So it's yeah, something to think about as you build out your uh, load balancing configurations in Azure is how are you gonna handle your health probes? So with that in mind, I'm gonna close this one out and I'm gonna look at my load balancing rules where it kind of ties this all together. Now this load balancing rule here, I have um, a name for it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this open. 
and uh, here's my front end configuration, which would be my private IP address. Uh, I'm using TCP for the protocol and then using port 3306. That's the MySQL MariaDB port. And then there, here's where I select my um, back end pool. Now notice here though, uh, with the port, I can have a different front end port than a, they do a back end port. Uh, and that's, so this allows me to change the port number on the back end if I want to, but in this case, I'm using the same front end and back end port. And uh, my back end pool, uh, here I have those three virtual machines running. And then my health probe is, is that like I explained a minute ago, it's just checking port 80 on those same three virtual machines to see if they are healthy. And uh, you can do session persistence in the event that you want to uh, bind a particular uh, series of requests to a particular IP address or something like that. So you have client IP, client IP address and protocol, that'd be TCP or UDP. Um, you, you can use client IP to make sure that all the, all the traffic coming in from a single IP address will be sent to the same node. So it would have something like a session uh, persistence across requests in the event that you have multiple requests coming in from the same host. In generally, in general though, it, you typically want to avoid scenarios like that in HA configurations so that you don't end up with the situation where uh, you have uh, the expectation that uh, something is going to be available between requests. You ideally don't want to have that. You ideally want to have uh, your request be able to be handled by any node, regardless of the order in which the request was received or uh, when it was received or which client actually made that request. So something to think about and when you're building these uh, HA configurations. Uh, so with that in mind, we can close this out and uh, look at the configuration for the other load balancer, which is basically the same thing. Um, I, I just have these uh, load balancing configurations for this right here uh, using the, the, the same kind of thing. It's just doing it for a web front end. The, basically, the only difference here is that I'm using a public IP address because this is a a public load balancer versus a private load balancer. So it's bound to this public IP address. So with, I can actually open this IP address up and then uh, show you that this uh, actual site is operational. In fact, I've already opened up a tab up here. So this is my site running against that HA configuration using those load balancers that we just saw. So this, this request comes into that front end IP address and then it's handled uh, by one of those web servers and then it makes web requests or sorry, database calls back to one of those three databases. I have no idea which uh, database or which web server actually handled it. I don't really need to. In fact, I don't really care. I don't, that's in fact, that's ideally the way that you want to build out your HA configurations in such a way that you really don't want to know or care to know which node is actually handling your request. It's just knowing that your requests are being handled appropriately by the backend resources that you have defined. Uh, but you do need to implement monitoring and other things that we haven't talked about so that you get notified in the event that something does go down one of your nodes goes down uh, and you need to get in there and figure out why your node went down or add a new node to it to figure out uh, to, to bring that application back up to a healthy state but the uh, the application can continue to function in an HA configuration in the event that you lose um, multiple nodes on the actual application. So in my application here, if I lost one web server, I'm okay. If I lose two database nodes, I'm still okay. I can still function with a single web uh, server and a single database node. So the odds of this entire application go down are significantly reduced because I have a highly available configuration on both the front end web servers and the database back ends. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.